The Australian Maltese Chamber of Commerce welcomes new members. For more details, visit their website, amcc.org.au. Al-Jumohra jina marli xikluna nil-akum fil-program Maltis Down Under. Program kultural bi-produzzjoni kolla kemi mil-belt ta' Melbourne. Fil-program il-lume, sernil ta' awma artista australian ta' nisel malt li jamel isem fil-xena ta' l-spettaklu fil-Australia. Ser marru kol fil-kċina ta' zewċ kontestanti fil-tilet staġun ta' l-program televizif My Kitchen Rules. Naddu għal ewel taqsima tal-program ta' għal-lum fejn ser niltaqaw ma' Paul Capsis, artista australian li għamel muxbis isem fil-dinja tal-spettaklu fil-Australia u għanke paħizi joħra, izdaw koll rebbiħ ta' numru ta' unuri b'mod partikolari il-Help Man Award, premju li jinata lil-laqwa produzzjoni t-teatrali u għatturi fil-Australia. Some might think that with a surname like Capsis, there is no Maltese connection at all, but there is definitely a very strong Maltese connection. Do you want to tell our view as why? <laughs> well, my father is Greek, but my mother is Maltese. And uh, I was raised by my d d a darling nanna, Angela, uh, in Surrey Hills. So mm -hmm. I grew up listening to Maltese my whole life and uh, Maltese culture, music, everything. And then as a very young child, I was completely and utterly obsessed with the island of Malta. And all I wanted to know about when I was a kid was Malta, Malta, Malta. And he speaks Maltese very well. <laughs> so in Nanda, she used to just uh, tell me about her life in Malta mm -hmm. uh, when she was a child herself, growing up in the Depression. El Gueran and all, in summer, all the experiences of Malta and Nanno, about Nanno. And then I was obsessed with um, knowing where in Malta they were from. Where was she born? Where was my mother born? Uh, my mother was born in Gzira. Mm -hmm. And Nanna's from Nashar and Nanno's from El Rabat, El Gudia. Anyway, I miss my grandmother very much because she passed away in 2007. So, and I've noticed in, my, in the suburb of Surrey Hills where I grew up, a lot of Maltese are no longer there. A lot mm -hmm. of them have died and a lot moved out in the middle, late 70s, early 80s. So I miss all that. I miss Maltese culture. Talking about your nanna, Nanna Angela, she actually was the subject of, of one of your shows, Angela's Kitchen. Tell us more about that. Well, it was my first time as a performer delving into my personal life. Mm -hmm. Up until that point, I'd always performed as other famous people, dead famous singers and actresses and stuff like that. But it was the first time that I told my story. So I came out as Maltese. I think the Australian public thought I was some exotic thing, you know. And then of course I told them. <laughs> well, you're still exotic being Maltese. <laughs> I know, right? But uh, describe my life with my grandmother growing up in Malta, in, I'm sorry, in Surrey Hills. And, um, it was, I was encouraged to write it by the great Australian director, Julian Merrick, who is a colleague of mine from a very long time ago. And he met my grandmother. Yeah, and I couldn't imagine doing it because I was so close to my nanna that I couldn't even contemplate the idea of speaking about her without getting emotional. And so about a year or so later, I, I got back in touch and I said, you know, I would like to do something to honour my grandmother's spirit, because she was an extremely special person to me and a great person in life. She was the most uh, generous, unconditionally loving grandmother you could ever wish to have. And I know that a lot of Maltese people have had that with their nunnas and yeah. nunnals and their mothers and fathers. So that was the interesting thing. When I did the play, what was really surprising was how people connected to it, and not just Maltese people. I mean, for me, the big great pride was the connection to the Maltese community in Australia, because we toured it everywhere we went. 
Brisbane, we went to Wollongong, Melbourne. Paramatta, <laughs> Melbourne. We only did a three week season in Melbourne and it sold out in a blink. Uh, and and one night I remember they Joe Vilbandira Tamalta, <laughs> they were at the end of the play they were waving the Maltese flag. I nearly fainted. Huh? <laughs> I couldn't believe it, but uh, it was lovely. It was just extraordinary what happened around the play. People brought their whole family. Tell us more about your beginnings, um, Paul. How did you happen to fall in this industry? I mean, you're renowned for one-man shows. You're renowned as a cabaret artist, as an actor, as a singer. Um, how did you fall into this? Gosh, I started out th 33 years ago, something like that now. Um, Absolute and utter persistence. I just had a desire to do it. I never thought I'd ever get anywhere because from everywhere I looked around me at the time, I didn't see anyone like me uh, on our television or on our screens. There were some people who I admired and who influenced me, but um, I started really at the very bottom of, you can imagine, of, of, as a performer. I started in community theatre, amateur musical society shows and eventually you know fringe and then it wasn't really until I started doing my own cabaret work mm -hmm. that's when things started to change and um, I started in the theatre and then a long circle uh, I ended up back in the theatre mm -hmm.